In this session, I'm going to introduce to you about two uh, traditional Chinese medical uh, case reports. So uh, there are two different uh, case scenarios. So I will let you know how we write a case report uh, in traditional Chinese medicine. For uh, TCM case report, there are uh, a couple uh, core components. The first one is a chief complaint. Chief complaint means that uh, the major discomfort of the patient. So usually it has to be in the format of a major discomfort for how long? Like they say like uh, for one day, for two hours, uh, for five days. And history taking is the most important part that you have to collect all of the information necessary uh, to uh, do the diagnosis. So this could include the present illness, uh, the family history, the past history. And examinations in TCM refers to the four examinations. So after uh, collecting the information of the history, doing the four examinations, finally you will come up with uh, uh, diagnosis. And it's better to have the Western medical diagnosis as well as the TCM diagnosis in your cash report. And the diagnosis should also include the syndrome differentiation, uh, which means that it, it should not just only be a uh, disease name in uh, TCM, but also a syndrome or specific pattern of the patient. Then uh, with all of this information and diagnosis, you can uh, uh, decide which kind of a treatment principle you want to use. And uh, by selecting the treatment principle, you can have uh, various uh, treatment options, such as herbal medicine, acupuncture, distribution, or trainer uh, for the patient. So let's take a look at this uh, uh, clinical case uh, scenario. So this is a 11-year-old uh, patient. So here you have the date of birth, you have the uh, sex, like a male or female, and height, weight, and uh, followed by the chart number. So the chick complaint, or sometimes we say CC, uh, chick complaint it usually is a major symptom for a certain uh, period. In this case, is the chronic sneezing and nasal discharge for seven, several years. And the history of present illness. So usually it starts with, uh, uh, according to someone's statement, for example, in this case, it, because uh, the patient is a child, so the statement is based on the patient's mom's uh, uh, statement. So you say, according to the patient's mom, uh, he has been experiencing sneezing, clear nasal discharge, and sinus congestion for several years. These symptoms are particularly prevalent upon awaking. Postnasal dripping and cough are occasionally noted, along with frequent throat clearing. He has no history of food allergies or asthma, although blood tests indicate an allergic response to eggs shrimps, and mite. So here you see that uh, uh, you document uh, the uh, source of the uh, information and then uh, describe the symptoms. So it could be uh, aggravated by something or be being relieved by some factors. So you have to describe this kind of uh, uh, information and including uh, the important uh, test or like laboratory examinations uh, that, is relate, that are related to the present illness. And the patient also have some additional symptoms in, include uh, nocturnal uh, perspiration, particularly on the head, dry lips, and fear of cold and heat. Although he enjoys uh, eating ice, he dislikes drinking water and is a picky eater. Approximately one month prior to his initial visit to our clinic, he felt faint at school and was found to have anemia. 
So uh, follow, following the present illness, you have to describe the past history. So including the medical history or like a surgical history. So the patient have uh, denied uh, a history of uh, systemic diseases and also there were no, uh, there, there were no surgery uh, done in the past. And it is also very important to des describe the lifestyle in Chinese medicine. Here you can put this kind of information in the personal history uh, or you can uh, have a column like a, uh, a lifestyle to describe the uh, uh, habits of the patient. So the patient does not consume tobacco, bitterness, or alcohol, but he is a picky eater. He has allergies to uh, different kind of foods like a shrimp, mice, and eggs. He has no regular uh, exercise habit, uh, but he has uh, some regular physical education uh, classes at school. Then uh, you have to describe the family history uh, related to uh, the present illness or not. Like for example, in this case, the patient's mom has an allergic rhinitis and topic dermatitis, where his father has an allergic rhinitis. And for the four examinations, uh, describe the uh, information that you collected based on the four examinations uh, in the sequence of, uh, of uh, uh, observation or inspection, uh, listening and smelling, interrogation, and then uh, palpation. So uh, upon inspection, uh, you found that uh, the patient has a, a lustreless uh, complexion, uh, no more nails, uh, no more skin, no more hair, no more mouth and lips. Uh, however, the patient has a pale red tongue body with a red tip and red speckles. Uh, the tongue coating or tongue fur is thin and white. And upon listening and smelling examinations, there were no, uh, no uh, abnormalities uh, noted. Upon inquiry or interrogation, the patient's mom mentioned that the patient has a fear of cold and fear of heat. And uh, emotionally, the patient was quite normal and uh, he sleeps well, no dreams, no discomfort in head and neck, eyes, ears, uh, but the patient has a uh, nasal congestion and snivel. And the patient also has a dry mouth and no bitter taste, dislikes water. Upon palpation, uh, the patient has a string-like pulse, or sometimes we call it a wiry pulse, on both right and left hand side. So here uh, uh, you can describe it in detail, like uh, when you take the pulse on the uh, chun, guan, chi, uh, these three uh, different locations. You can also uh, describe uh, in, uh, in which location uh, you have, uh, uh, in each location you have a uh, different uh, 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 feeling of the pulse. So by taking the pulse, it, it actually can also tell you uh, a lot of information. So then uh, uh, the diagnosis of the patient uh, is a sniveling nose. So this is quite different from the uh, deep source natural congestion. So deep source natural congestion usually refers to sinusitis, and sniveling nose usually refers to allergic rhinitis in TCM. So uh, the Western medical diagnosis is allergic rhinitis. And the symptom of the patient is uh, pretty much like a, a spleen and a lung chi vacuity. So then uh, you can, uh, 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 select your uh, treatment uh, principles uh, based on the TCM diagnosis. So because the patient have a spleen and lung chi vacuity, you would like to tonify the lung chi and, and uh, spleen chi. So by doing this, uh, in this case, uh, you can, uh, uh, for example, in this case, you can prescribe xiao uh, qin long tang Xin Yi San and Xiang Sha Liu Jun Zi Tang for this patient. 
So in this case, uh, Xiangsa Liu Jun Zi Tang is a kind of a Chinese herbal formula that could be used to tonify the spleen. And uh, uh, Xing Yi San, or the Mongolia flower powder, is a kind of Chinese herbal medicine that could be used uh, to treat the sniveling uh, nose. And uh, Xiao Qin Nong Tang, it is good to warm the uh, human body to, uh, so this can uh, expel the uh, cold evil in the lung. So by doing this, uh, you can uh, treat the manifestation or the tip of the disease. You can also treat the root of the disease. Our next uh, clinical case scenario is another uh, four-year-old girl. So uh, she suffered from petechia, went on, uh, off and on during the past seven months. So uh, petechia is a kind of a, a small uh, bleeding spots on our skin. So uh, the girl uh, was referred to the TCM clinic by a pediatric hematologist uh, a couple years ago due to the multiple petechia for more than seven months. So according to the statement of her parents, she had a fever episode on her first day of kindergarten in uh, March, and uh, there were no accompanying symptoms such as a chillness, cough, runny nose, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or dysuria. So the fever subsided spontaneously on the first day. However, numerous ecchymosis on whole body surface was noted on the second day. So the initial laboratory investigation revealed isolated thrombocytopenia. So it's only uh, 4,000 per uh, unit liter. So usually the normal range is uh, 150,000 to 400,000. Uh, the patient has a normal uh, C3 and C4 complement, uh, normal anti-nuclear antibodies. So these are the uh, tests for the autoimmune disease, uh, like uh, uh, lupus, like uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And the patient has a quite a normal hemoglobin and uh, normal leukocyte. And also uh, she had a normal uh, prothrombin and uh, partial uh, thrombin time. So uh, this indicates that the patient only has an isolated thrombocytopenia without affecting the whole bone marrow because the bone marrow generates uh, uh, red blood cells and white blood cells as well as the platelets. And uh, the patient only have the decreased platelet. She was diagnosed as an idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura then and uh, received treatment with the steroids like uh, mesoprenicolone and uh, IVIG upon admission. The level of the platelet counts resumed to normal range, but then uh, it relapsed with purpura two months later. She was referred to a pediatric hematologic clinic at a tertiary medical center where three more courses of IVIG infusion with uh, oral uh, steroid were given to the patient. However, every time her platelet increased after IVIG injection, but declined quickly after discharge from the hospital. So here you can see uh, from the uh, graphs here, uh, the patient has a, a very low uh, platelet count, and uh, whenever uh, she received a steroid and the intravenous immunoglobin treatment, uh, the platelet count uh, rose to a very high uh, number and then uh, declined uh, very soon after discharge uh, from the hospital. So then uh, the patient uh, uh, came to our TCM clinic for help. So in reviewing the past history, uh, personal history and uh, family history, she was healthy uh, without any congenital developmental disease and major hospitalization history before. The family denied history of a traumatic injury, medication usage, body weight loss, palpable mass, and edema. There was no family history of hematologic diseases. 
Upon four examinations, uh, we found that the patient had multiple widespread petechia. She also had a great facial complexion. She had a heavy headiness, and uh, she has a vexing heat on the palms and soles. She also had a nice waiting. With the thirst, uh, she has a liking for cold drinks. She had poor appetite. So upon inspection of the tongue, we found that the patient has a red tongue with red spot on the tip. And uh, the tongue fur is white thin, and the only little tongue coating uh, with peeling. And uh, upon the pulse diagnosis, uh, the patient uh, was found to, had, to have a fine and rapid pulse. So the Western medical diagnosis is a refractory idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. And the TCM syndrome differentiation is effulgent in with vacuity fire and phlegmatic movement of blood. Or in Chinese, we call it yin xu huo wang. So this patient uh, has a, a very severe form of indeficiency. So then uh, we decided to nourish the yin and extinguish fire. So by doing this, uh, uh, we prescribed uh, some uh, Chinese herbal medicine precision for the patient. And uh, we also uh, gave some uh, suggestions to modify her lifestyle and diet. Uh, for example, uh, she need to avoid spicy food and fried food. We also encourage her to intact uh, some uh, juicy fruits. And uh, regarding the lifestyle, she was encouraged to have enough sleep uh, to avoid sitting up too late. Um, then uh, the TCM prescription is a zi yin jiang huo tang, or the uh, fertile dentry uh, combination. So this uh, uh, fertile dentry combination uh, uh, has a couple of different kinds of herbs. I will show you in the next slide. And uh, in addition to the zi yin jiang huo tang, we also prescribe four different kinds of herbs. They are han lian cao, nu zhen zi, bai mao gen, and the xian ke cao. So this is a summarization of the ingredients of the prescribed Chinese herbal formulas and single herbs to this uh, patient. So inside the uh, zi yin jiang wo tang, here you can see there are uh, shen di huang, dang gui, bai shao, Bai Zhu, Tian Men Dong, Chen Pi, Zi Mu, Wang Bai, Zi Gan Chao, Shen Jiang, Da Zhao, Mai Men Dong, and uh, Shen Di Huang. And uh, the other four herbs I just mentioned to you in the earlier slide. So after one month of TCM treatment, she had no more purpura and that's nice waiting. The DAP3 data show that the predicted count was within the normal range. Since she still had symptoms other than purpura and nice waiting, TCM formula were kept continually used. Its symptoms improved gradually and no more thrombocytopenic episode was noted in the next six months. So here you can see the disease, the disease course improved after uh, she started to take uh, Chinese herbal medicine, and the uh, practice count resumed to normal range uh, after taking the Chinese herbal medicine. She was declared as a complete remission and need no more pediatric hematologic clinic follow-up after uh, the Chinese medical treatments. Uh, she was still under regular outpatient clinic follow-up in the TCM clinic for uh, a total of 12 months. There were no obvious adverse effects or relapse throughout the follow-up period. So if you are interested, you can also take a look of this uh, case report that we published uh, in Complementary Therapies in Medicine in 2013. Okay, so these are the two uh, clinical case reports that I would like to show you 
how a TCM doctor see a patient uh, in a clinic and how we make a uh, TCM diagnosis and then uh, prescribe a transherbal medicine to treat the patient. Thank you.